Once upon a time, many moons ago, I managed a little pizza place in South Georgia. And among the many marketing tools at my disposal was a costume of a giant slice of pizza. It was our mascot. So like if we got a big order at a school or if we donated pizzas to a charity event and there was going to be cameras there, you know, I'd stick whoever drew the short straw into this nasty nine-year-old, never been clean, saturated with years worth of South Georgia swamp sweat costume. And I'd make them stand near the pizza and get punched in the nuts by six-year-olds for half an hour. So when Halloween rolled around and we started getting a bunch of big orders for parties and stuff, naturally, I planned to send our little pizza costume along with them, right? You know, well, one of my employees had what I considered the damn clever idea of getting a costume for the costume so that our mascot would actually be dressed for Halloween. I fucking loved it. Now, it was kind of tricky because, they, you know, they don't make costumes for costumes or for triangular shaped people in general. So after a few ideas, we eventually settled on getting a witch's hat and an old broom. You know, the head comes to a point, it's a pointed hat, it makes perfect sense. So we get our seasonally attired mascot ready, uh, and we send him out the door. And for several minutes afterwards, we thought this was a good idea, but we were wrong. See, most of these party orders were going to churches, and of fucking course they're going to churches. There's a church for every dozen people in that city. We always had a bunch of church orders. But unfortunately, I'm from Sanity, so I didn't realize that the reason we had so many church orders that night is because the fucking churches are trying to shield children from the evils of their own holiday. And as any of you who are unfortunate enough to grow up in a devoutly evangelical household probably have already figured out, our witch costume did not go over well. In fact, most of the churches wouldn't even let him in the door. I spent an insane amount of the rest of my night fielding complaints from Christians about our wholesome, innocent pizza slice being decked out in the garb of Satan. And, and the worst thing is I had to pretend to take this seriously because that was my job, right? I, I'm, I'm not allowed to just scream into the phone, it's a conical hat, you ignorant fuck. If all it takes for, your, for the desolate one to corrupt the heart of your Christian children is a pointy hat on an anthropomorphized piece of pizza, maybe you should be more worried about what an impotent weakling you're worshiping on Sunday than what kind of fucking headgear we put on a rancid styrofoam triangle. Look, I'm from Detroit. We love Halloween in Detroit. We got so excited about it that we'd set our whole damn city on fire the night before. So it was baffling to me to try to acclimate to a culture where people honestly thought that kids dressing up as Power Rangers to get free Tootsie Rolls was a tool of the fucking devil. You know, it's easy to write this off as pure, unadulterated stupidity. And I mean really easy. But there's more to it than that. And if you scrape the surface, it gets even more depressing. I mean, consider the worldview of the average devout Southern Baptist. This is a person for whom the devil is a real, genuine thing. You know, a person who reads in their Bible that Jesus definitely pulled demons out of people. A person whose worldview is terrifying, sure, but even more importantly, it's inconsistent as all hell. The devil thing doesn't make any sense if you dig all the way into it. You know, the existence of demons doesn't comport with our present knowledge of mental illness or all the other stuff we have present knowledge of, the worldview of a lot of these believers only works because they don't hash it all the way out. That's important, right? Because if you start asking too many questions, the idea of worshiping a guy with an eternal torture chamber has to feel kind of fucked up. So the key for a lot of these people is to simply cordon off certain questions, certain areas of inquiry. And there's no way to do that without leaving the doors of your worldview wide open to whatever cultural bullshit comes down the pipe. Are there ghosts? Well, it's consistent with your worldview regarding an afterlife, right? Uh, the Bible has a few ghostly apparitions in it. Maybe they exist. You can't rule them out with any logical process that wouldn't also rule out God, so you can't rule them out, right? Uh, do witches exist? Well, the Bible expressly commands believers to kill them, so they must exist. God wouldn't order you to go out and massacre something that doesn't exist, would he? I mean, he probably wouldn't order you to go out and massacre anybody, but that's a whole different diatribe. You know, it, 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 do demons exist? Well, uh, pfft, they have to. Of course they do. There's absolutely no way to reconcile the biblical Jesus myths without literally inhabiting a demon-haunted world. See, when I hear a freaky sound or I see an eerie shape in the dark, my mind instinctively goes to the same place as theirs. Holy fuck, that's a monster. But I can brush that instinctive fear off in the second that it takes for my brain to remember that monsters aren't real things. But what is it like to live in a universe where your very ability to comprehend the world around you demands ambiguity? Can demons get inside you? Do your lucky socks really make a difference? Are you cursed? Have you angered God? Is that a demon in the backyard? Was that a ghost that knocked that book off the shelf? Will my children burn in hell if the pizza man wears a witch's hat? On all counts, their worldview doesn't allow an answer any more definitive than maybe.